What are the most unsafe cars, SUVs, and trucks that you need to avoid? That's what we're gonna find out. Welcome to Car Up Corner, where we help you, the consumer, master the process of car buying and car ownership. For this video, I'm gonna share the most unsafe and potentially dangerous new cars, trucks, and SUVs that you should think twice about buying. The vehicles in this video received a poor crash test score from the IIHS, the Insurance Institute for Highway Safety, which is a gold standard for vehicle safety ratings, and recently updated their testing for 2023. But before we get into this list, if you also want to learn which vehicles are the safest ones to buy, you can take a look at my other video in this link up over here. And remember, if you enjoy and get value out of this video, remember to subscribe and turn on the notifications. I post two videos a week, always straight to the point, valuable car buying advice designed to help you, the consumer. Now, as mentioned, the IIHS recently made their crash tests harder to pass for 2023, including their side impact test and small overlap test. So many vehicles that previously received a good or average rating are now receiving a moderate or a poor rating under the new testing, including the first SUV, which is the Audi Q3. Under the new updated testing, the Audi Q3 received a marginal rating in the moderate overlap test. It also received a poor score for its headlight performance, which is a test that a lot of new vehicles don't do very well in. Another small SUV that didn't perform very well is the Buick Encore which received a poor rating in the moderate overlap crash test, which is the lowest score that you can get. Now, considering that the Encore is a relatively older and dated vehicle, this wasn't too surprising to see. And like the Q3, it also received a poor score in the headlight performance test. Another small SUV that was a bit more of a surprise, however, is the Ford Escape. According to the IIHS, the Ford Escape received a marginal score in the updated side impact test. Thankfully, that was the only test where the Escape performed not so well. In every other crash test, it did receive a good score. Another pair of small SUVs that didn't do so well, however, were the Chevrolet Equinox and the GMC Terrain. Much like the Ford Escape, the GMC Terrain received a marginal score in the side impact test. And the Chevy Equinox, which is mechanically identical to the Terrain, received a marginal score in the side impact test and also a poor score in the moderate overlap test. Fortunately, because these are older SUVs, GM is going to be redesigning them in the near future. And hopefully when the new models do come out, especially the new Equinox EV, the safety ratings are going to be a lot better. Another small SUV that didn't perform very well in the crash testing was the Jeep Renegade. The Renegade received a marginal score in the side impact test, and it also received a poor score in the moderate overlap test. Jeep is one of the few brands that in general, their lineup doesn't perform very well in the safety test, as we're going to see a little bit later in the video. But for now, let's get into one of the worst performing small SUVs of the safety testing, which is the Mitsubishi Eclipse Cross. Of all the small SUVs that were tested in 2023, the Eclipse Cross received one of the lowest scores. The IIHS gave it a poor score in the side impact test, and also gave it a poor score in the moderate overlap test, making it one of the only small SUVs to receive such a low score. But as disappointing as that is, there is one other small SUV that was also a huge surprise and also a disappointment, which was the 2023 Subaru Crosstrek. The Crosstrek received a poor score in the side impact test and also received a poor score for its headlight performance. Now, as surprising as that is, because Subaru generally receives top-notch safety scores, what's important to keep in mind is that the Crosstrek was completely redesigned for 2024, and there's a strong chance that the new model is going to fix all of these issues. In the meantime, let's move on to the next vehicle category, which is small cars and mid-sized cars, starting with the first one, which is the Subaru Impreza. Now, just like the previous gen Crosstrek, the 2023 Impreza received a poor score in the side impact test, and it also received a poor score with headlight performance. Now, again, I expect this to change for the brand new 2024 model that was just released, which is likely going to have a much better safety score. After all, safety is something that Subaru is very well known for, and their other models, including the Forester and Outback, have both received top-notch safety scores from the IIHS. The next car, however, is a different story, which is the Chevrolet Malibu. According to the new testing, the Malibu received a poor rating in the side impact test. Now that one really wasn't a huge surprise, especially considering that GM is discontinuing the Malibu for 2024. 
so it's no longer going to be in production. And another mid-sized sedan that didn't do very well in the testing was the Nissan Altima. According to the latest test scores, the Altima scored a poor rating in the side impact test, which just goes to show what kind of impact the updated testing can sometimes have. In the previous years, the Altima was a top safety pick, but since the Altima failed the updated crash test for 2023, unfortunately, it's no longer a top safety pick. And the same is also true for the next car, which is the Kia Forte. Much like the Altima, the Forte didn't perform so well in the updated testing, receiving a poor score in the side impact test, and also receiving a poor score for headlight performance. And now let's move on to larger mid-sized SUVs, starting with the first one, which was a huge surprise to me, which is the Hyundai Palisade. Shockingly, even though the Palisade is a highly acclaimed SUV, with amazing praise from almost everyone that reviews it, it doesn't appear to have the best safety score. Although it did perform well in most of the tests, it actually received a poor score in the moderate overlap test, which is a huge disappointment. Another mid-sized SUV that didn't perform very well is the Jeep Grand Cherokee. Like the Palisade, it received a poor score in the moderate overlap test. And another one that did the same is the Chevy Traverse, receiving a poor score in the same moderate overlap test, and also a marginal score with headlight performance. Another one that didn't do so well is the Dodge Durango, receiving a marginal score in the small overlap test, this one not being a huge surprise, considering that the Durango is a relatively old SUV. The next one, however, was more of a surprise, which was the Lincoln Corsair. The Corsair received a marginal score in the small overlap test, and also a poor score with headlight performance. I guess this one makes sense, considering that the Corsair is mechanically identical to the Ford Escape, which also received the exact same score. Another SUV we have on the list is the Nissan Murano. This one received a marginal score in the side impact test, and also a poor score in the moderate overlap test. And next up we have the Toyota 4Runner. The 4Runner received a marginal score in the small overlap test. Now again, we have to remember that when it comes to older vehicle designs like the 4Runner, the Murano, and a few others, it's not exactly a huge surprise when they don't exactly get the best crash test score. Recently updated or redesigned vehicles have had a chance to be comprehensively updated when it comes to active and passive safety. So when you buy an older vehicle like the 4Runner and a few others, there is a little bit more of a risk when it comes to safety because you're getting a vehicle that just hasn't been updated when it comes to the latest active and passive safety technology. Another mid-sized SUV that didn't do very well in the test is the Volkswagen Atlas. This one received a marginal rating in the moderate overlap test and also a marginal rating with headlight performance. But no question, the worst performing SUV of 2023 was the Jeep Wrangler. The Wrangler has never really done too well in any of these tests, but for 2023, it's a major disappointment. It only received a marginal rating in the small overlap test, a marginal rating in the side impact test, and also a poor rating in the moderate overlap test, which makes it one of the only vehicles to receive a poor or a marginal rating in almost every single category for 2023. And that brings us to the final category, which is trucks with the first ones being the Chevy Silverado and the GMC Sierra. Unfortunately, many trucks are not exactly top performers when it comes to crash testing. The GM trucks, however, did perform a little bit worse than most, with a marginal score in the small overlap test. Another truck that didn't perform too well is the Toyota Tacoma, which received a marginal score in the side impact test. Now again, this is another one that is an older design going all the way back to 2015. And considering that Toyota is going to introduce a brand new Tacoma for 2024, I expect the new one is going to perform a lot better. So why exactly did so many new vehicles fail the testing in 2023, especially when many believe that new vehicles are safer than ever before? Well, again, it has to do with the type of testing that's done and the crash testing requirements. As mentioned, the IIHS conducts four different crash worthiness evaluations. These include the moderate overlap front test, the passenger and driver small overlap test, and also the side impact test. Unlike other similar crash testing programs, like for example, NHTSA's new car assessment program that does crash testing on the full width of the vehicle, the IIHS only does crash testing on an offset part 
or a small portion of the vehicle, not the entire width. And as a result, only a small part of the car's structure has to manage all of the crash energy, which makes the crash testing a lot more challenging to pass. And not only that, but the Institute also made the crash testing a lot more challenging for 2023, increasing the speed of the impact from 31 to 37 miles per hour, and also increasing the weight of the impact from 3,300 pounds to 4,200 pounds. This was done to better represent the average type of vehicles that are normally found on the roads today, which are a lot heavier and bigger than vehicles of the past. And it's a great thing that institutes like this are constantly updating and improving their crash testing because it forces the manufacturers to constantly update and improve the safety of their cars too. So let me know what you thought of this video and if you have any suggestions for any future car videos, just leave a comment below. You can also take a look at my other car videos, including the safest cars that you can buy by clicking these links over here. Make sure to follow me on TikTok and Instagram. And if you need any additional car buying advice, recommendations, or help with getting a great deal on your next new car purchase, make sure to check out carhelpcan.com. Thanks so much for watching and see you next time.